Okay, so uh, this is going to be just a short video that uh, that uh, shows you how we can extrapolate the position of a geological boundary across a landscape where there's kind of undulating topography uh, based just on the knowledge of where one uh, the location of that um, contact is in one place and also knowing something about its orientation. And the, uh, I guess the focus of this, this, um, this video is also going to be that we don't need to have our, our location of our contact here actually on uh, a structural, uh, sorry, on a topographic contour. This might have been the case in some of the cartoon examples that you've been doing in classes. Um, but in the real world, uh, only occasionally does the, the location of a contact that you happen to find happen to also be exactly on one of these uh, topographic uh, contours. Um, so the, the aim here is to, so we've got a, 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 a contact in between the, the, I guess the green unit is overlying the, um, the brown unit here, um, I call the green unit CL and the brown unit uh, BVG, which those coming on the field trip might um, learn what those mean. Um, but for this, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Uh, and we can see that the, the symbol here is showing us that the contact is dipping 45 degrees here towards the south. Okay, so uh, the strike of the contact is, should continue along, ooh, should continue on somewhere along this direction and this direction. But we get to this this valley here, which you can see in, in the topographic contours. Uh, we need to kind of know: uh, is it going to go this way? Is it going to carry on straight through? Is it going to come kind of down like this and then up again like that, or or some or some of that? And 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 how far is it going to be deflected by this this topography? So this is useful because this allows us to project uh, across valleys where we expect to find the contact and then we can go and make more observations and check that our understanding of the topology is correct or do we need to in in incorporate some other feature that can explain what we're seeing. So the first step to, to do is um, uh, is to look at the uh, the actual height of the of the contact that we found. So in uh, idealized examples uh, that you might have done for practice, contact might occasionally be exactly on this contour. So we need to work out how high it is. And that's just a straightforward extrapolation between, in this case, the 80 meter and the 90 meter contour. contour. Use a ruler to do this um, when you're uh, doing it in the field. Um, uh, so you can see here that I've just I've just put on a ruler here. So these are kind of every, there are 10 divisions on this kind of PowerPoint ruler. And you can see that it's roughly uh, two and a half kind of up. Um, so we can say that the contact is actually 82 and a half uh, meters. So what we can then do is we can actually draw in the structural contour uh, for um, that 82 and a half meters. And then uh, we can work out how far apart the structural contours are using uh, trigonometry. But in this case, it's kind of a straightforward example because uh, I've chosen the, the, the dip uh, to be um, 45 degrees, so the, the, the horizontal displacement should be the same as the vertical uh, displacement of the structural contours, so they should be 10 meters apart, and so you can use the scale of the map, which should be given on the edges of your maps, uh, so we can work out how far apart these structural contours should be. So the first two that I've put on here are the structural contour at 82 and a half, so that goes to the place, one place where we know it is, and we can put 72 and a half, which is kind of 10 meters um, further away. Now we can't use these structural contours to uh, uh, see where they intersect with the contours of the map because the map doesn't have uh, contours every two and a half meters, it only has every 10 meters. So what we have to do is now extrapolate between these structural contours and we have to make some estimate of where 80 and 70 meters is. It might also help to have 75 and maybe 85. Um, so that can be done uh, again with a ruler. Uh, or estimating. Uh, so now we've put on some structural contours of 80, 85, 75, 70, and 65, just based on those first two that we put on at 82 and a half and 72 and a half, um, and kind of estimating the distances between um, between those to where 80 and 75 was. Um, now, if you were doing this kind of hastily in the field, you could kind of eyeball it. Uh, if you're doing it kind of uh, in the um, workroom afterwards, uh, maybe doing some evening work, seeing what you're going to do mapping the next day, uh, uh, you might want to use a ruler and be a bit more careful. Um, so what we can do now is what we would do with just any regular structural contours, we can we can basically extrapolate uh, or we can look at 
where does a structural contour, in this case the 80 meter contour, that crosses kind of, oh, oh, that crosses the 80 thingy there. So this is the 80 contour here and it's structural contour, sorry, and it's intersecting here, the um, uh, topographic contour. We could look at the uh, uh, 70. Okay, so that's uh, this one here. We can see that that, that intersects here and here. Uh, not quite there. Um, and you can see from this, we've only got three points now. Uh, it's got, contact has to go through this one here as well. So that's where we know it is. It's not really helping. So what it might be useful to do is to estimate on between the topographic contours where the kind of the every five meter contour is. So now we can start to put on some more points here. We can look at the 85. So you can see the 85 crosses the 85 topographic contour here and here doesn't quite cross it over here, gets quite close. Um, we can look at the 80, we've done the 80, so do the 75, that crosses here, here, and here. Uh, we can do the 70 and we can look at the 65 and the 65 doesn't, doesn't quite. So, um, so we know that uh, our boundary shouldn't cross the 65 structural contour because there's no topographic boundary for it to go across. So we can look now at where our boundary should go. And I think you can hopefully follow that and see um, that we can uh, extrapolate this contact across the, um, the, the landscape and it's reflected quite substantially by this, this topography. So this is kind of a nice summary of what we've, we've done here. We've taken, this, um, we've taken this location and its orientation. We've drawn some structural contours. We've, well, we've figured out where the structural contours are going to go based on you know, starting with working out what elevation this is at because it's in between the 80 and 90 and we've extrapolated across the, the landscape here. Okay, um, so I guess it shouldn't be a, a surprise to you that it's deflected this much because we've got quite a, we've got a, a big valley and we've got a dipping contact so the contact should dip down the valleys and up the kind of like the hills or the, the spurs as it were on the edges of the, the valleys. Okay, so hopefully this has helped. If it's not helped, then um, ask people. Asking always is better than not asking. Okay. Stop.